Hey, what's going on everybody? BDL44 here coming at you with another video. So, I do have uh, some information. The M B N NBA is going to be investigating two sign and trade deals. One um, involving Lonzo Ball uh, from the Pelicans to the Bulls and the other involving Kyle Lowry from Toronto to Miami. Um, you know, tampering, 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 tampering. Hey, NBA, I, I, this is the the, sen the sentiment going around, and it's the same sentiment I have right now. Stop playing yourself. Stop it. Stop this. You can't stop people from tampering. You can't stop guys from having going through back channels and, and, and finding their way out of bad situations. Some of these situations you have, as, as my channel has basically been set up lately to talk about, is some of the, some of them suck, okay? Portland situation, that sucks. It would be in Dame's best interest to tamper his way into conversations that would broker him out of Portland. That would be in his best interest. That would be what someone who has good advice would tell him. So all this talk about don't tamper, oh, don't tamper. Look, y'all got to find another way to appease the owners, okay? You got to find another way. Because asking people who have found leverage and found power to relinquish that power, uh, needless to say, does not work. And, and those who gain power are the players. They understand that through um, owning their own management and, and doing business amongst themselves in regards to, to management and, 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 and that kind of thing gives them leverage in some cases to move, to get out of places. And with that leverage comes the right to converse with others in regards to how they can uh, you know, weigh uh, their options and, and find their way into better situations, leverage themselves into better situations. We're not taking steps backwards, okay? The NBA needs to understand this. No one wants to take any steps backwards. No one's going to be relinquishing power. A guy like LeBron James isn't going to say, well, even though I own, uh, you know, I'm, I'm affiliated strongly with Clutch Sports and, and all of this good stuff. Uh, let me just let me just back back up a little bit and let you guys just kind of keep us in place in these bad situations. Let me just stay in Cleveland my whole career and not try to get out of here and talk to my boy Dwayne Wade about how I can meet team up in, he in Miami. Let me not waste my time trying to get out of Cleveland a second time and going to the Lakers. Let me just stay in Cleveland because that would be what's best for the NBA. That would make the owners feel good about being able to keep players that they're not doing anything uh, enough of anything to keep happy. Yeah, let's let's do that. No, NBA, we're not doing that. Tampering is something that you're going to have to find another way uh, to, to manage. People are going to get out of bad situations or unfavorable ones and they're going to find them through their ways into good situations. They've earned that right. They have it. You can't take it from them. You can try. You can go through the back channels of the, whatever, you you know, the front. Whether take it by the book if you need to. You can go that route. You're still going to find yourself having situations bleeding through the cracks because they already know that at the end of the day, these athletes are not going to stay in these bad situations. You're going to have more and more people holding out on some Ben Simmons. I'm not talking to nobody stuff. If you keep on focusing in on tampering as if it's a real thing. It's not a real thing. Everybody's going to converse with everybody. These people on the basketball floor with each other four times a year. All these teams, two times or four times a year. They're going to be able to talk to each other when they're guarding one another. Hey, you want to go play for this team? Sure, let's talk about it another day. All right. You think those conversations aren't being had when a screen is set? Come on, man. If you if you try to take away tampering, if you try to take away tampering, uh, I can assure you that you're going to have more and more players sitting out, more and more protests, more and more uh players not giving their all things like that players sitting out for 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 hamstring injuries when they know they can run you have more of that if you keep on trying to police them in this way and as far as the teams tampering behind the scenes the teams are just just the places these players want to go man that's it i mean what do you want to do what 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 do you want out of these owners all they're trying to do is is make the money that they're trying to make while trying to, to keep the, the, their, their franchise going. Some of these franchises make more money than others. So you think they're not going to try to give themselves a leg up or a heads up when players are trying to put, push power moves in the name of moving from one franchise to the next? What are they supposed to do? That's kind of what the Cleveland owner was talking about. Like, what do you want me to do? Westbrook is going here and here and here. We knew when we got him he wasn't going to stay here. You knew when he got here he was going to want to get up out of here, NBA. So why y'all tripping? Like, and the whole situation with Kyle Lowry, that one's kind of weird because it's like, I don't think anybody's unhappy. What I mean by that is, yeah, you could, you could point out tampering, 
but shouldn't tampering be more so focused upon when one side or another is feeling like they've been cheated or feel like they've been squandered? I don't look at the Toronto situation from afar and see any any sign of that. Because Kyle Lowry's been with that team for, what, seven years? Resigned with them twice? They know they're going in a different direction. They just got to paying a guy like Fred Van Fleet who plays his same position. You know what I mean? It's like they're clearly moving in a different re- direction. It's an amicable parting of ways, clearly. They just announced that he's going to be the first jersey they retire in their franchise's history, Kyle Lowry. So who's the grievance party? It certainly isn't the Heat. They're, they're acquiring the player. So the NBA needs to ask, okay, yes, do we want to take a look at all forms of tampering? Maybe. But at the end of the day, when it's time to hand down reprimands, can we take into account that there's no grieving party, <laughs> that there's no wronged side here, that everybody's very happy with how this planned out? If everybody's happy, that's what I'll say to the NBA. If everybody's happy, uh, should we not con- be concerned with more so making sure that, that that's the goal rather than, re- rather than uh, enforcing some rule? Let's say tampering is a problem when there's a grievance party. <laughs> if both parties are pleased, then there should be no problem. That's how I look at things, on a simple simple way of looking at things. Um, so we'll see if that's possible based on the nuances of how things work. But I think that's kind of how they should look at it. If Miami's happy and Toronto's happy, then the NBA should shut up. Um, and as far as the New Orleans situation, I don't know, that might be a little different. But it seemed to me that it might not be, given the fact that the New Orleans Pelicans were moving on from Lonzo Ball as well. Uh, now, I think this they may be a grieved party. They may be feeling a little like they might have lost out in the situation. Obviously, that has nothing to do with the other situation. But in some ways, it may have something to do with the Pelicans, given the fact that they were trying to position themselves to get Kyle Lowry in the Lonzo Ball deal. They were getting rid of Lonzo so they could pay Lowry. Lowry went to Miami, so maybe they're the grievance party in all of this, and both of these situations are combined. But all in all, at the end of the day, tampering is a waste of everyone's time. You are focusing your energy on the wrong thing. Instead of saying everybody's wrong for doing it this way, how about trying to maneuver and evolve around the circumstance so that you can govern what it needs to take place around it? Stop being lazy is what I'm saying to the NBA. Stop being lazy. You know these guys are going to converse, so build around that. Evolve around that. Stop making that a problem and attacking that, attacking that. You're tampering, you're tampering. No, do something so that tampering has certain aspects of it that are okay and certain aspects of it that are not. Stop applying tampering as a wrongdoing across the board because the reality is each and every situation is nuanced. So if you do your investigation and you come up with something, take into account just about everything there in regards to who's upset who's the grievance to party and ultimately the fact that you can't stop people from communicating and you have them down there running around they can have communication with each other people have a right to talk to one another and you can put all kinds of different stuff in a contract but at the end of the day they're just going to defy that and they're going to find a way out of that because they have the power now and no one's going to be relinquishing power at the end of the day that's what it comes down to so that's how I look at it. Ain't deeper than that. Tampering is a waste of time. Focusing on tampering is a waste of time, rather. And uh, the NBA has a bigger problem. And that problem is uh, they have several big issues, I think, at this point. One of them being they need to expand. Uh, the NBA needs to make sure that they expand. Get two teams out there as fast as possible. Um, because you got a lot of talent coming in, and you're starting to have overlaps of talented players of the same position on different teams. Uh, It's starting to get to a point where teams can't manage without putting overly talented players in lesser roles. It's getting to that point. And uh, it's only gonna get worse, especially since a lot of these vets are continuing to be um, productive into years 15 and 16. These guys still going strong. That means that more young players are coming in uh, who are probably gonna be on top of each other, stacked on top of each other without getting minutes. So that's a bigger problem than being freaking tampering. Um, the officiating issue is awful. They know it. Nobody wants to talk about it. Everyone wants to coddle the officials, say how hard their job is, say how great of a job they're doing, but they're corrupt as hell. We all know it. Do something about it. Period. I'm tired of p- pretending 
like I haven't been watching games being fixed and, and controlled all my damn life. Do something about that. Um, and two, uh, the injury issues. You know, uh, you probably playing too many games out there. You know, I heard Kyle Kuzma allude to that. I've heard several other players allude to it as well. The, the, the schedule is not good for the body. 82 games plus playoffs is too much. I think they did a, m a much better job with 72 with the play-in tournament. I think it's a step in the right direction. I like the play-in tournament. I think that's the right right way to go. Uh, maybe inner inner conference playoffs, maybe that's another thing they're going to consider. I don't think it's as necessary as it once was because the East is getting good again and it's starting to be much more balanced in the league, so maybe it's not as necessary as it was maybe four or five years ago, but that's something to consider going forward. Um, stuff like that, that's more important to me. That I think those are things that the NBA needs to be hovering around, not trying to oppress players from going to places when they're in bad situations a lot of the time. Uh, that's where I look at it. You just stop that. Stop that nonsense. And stay here. No, don't stay here. Get the hell out of there. You should be the league, and everybody, all of us, should be encouraging a guy like Dane Lillard to take his career by the horns and leave a place like Portland, who's headed in a different direction in his timeline. That is easy to see. You want to get mad at Dame Lillard for, for tampering. I'm mad at you for not encouraging him to get out of there. That's real. That's about as real as it gets. I ain't going to lie to y'all. This ain't got nothing to do with the Portland fan base. I'm sorry. You know what I mean? Y'all got to hear this kind of nonsense or feel this way or whatever. But believe me, if I were a fan of the player and I was a Portland fan, I wouldn't want him here. We're in a different timeline. We need him to leave so we can have the money to, to, to build sustainability and actually get ourselves a championship. Unfortunately, that's the way it's set up with the salary cap. You need his big contract off the books. You can start over with a player who's more likely to have his timeline aligned with yours. You understand what I'm saying? Dame is 32 years old. Unless y'all can get somebody to come to Portland real quick, he, he's going to retire without a ring. How's that? What's best for him? But you want to get mad at him for having a conversation with so-and-so about getting the hell out of there. Not to say that he has, because he hasn't. But I'm just saying, you, you, you want to shun that, but then want to encourage players to just sit there and rot in bad situations. Careers going down the toilet because they're just in bad situations. Nah, man. Protect the players. Billionaires going to be billionaires. Y'all trying to align yourselves making billionaires happy like they about to run out of money. Like they ain't going to have the franchise long after these guys retire. They're going to be a whole new fleet of players coming in to make these guys fat and happy, rich and happy. Stop trying to make things easy, even easier for them when their timeline is a lot more stretched out than these players who can only play for as much as maybe 10, 15 years, 20 years. Nah, they got a 20 year span. These guys got a whole lifetime to build their franchise and continue their long lasting wealth. Stop making the game easier for the, for the owners. Stop that. Because they're the one making all the money. They're the ones getting the biggest discounts. It's like, nah, nah, we need to change. If, if we're going to have a better product, you need to start focusing in on making sure that the players are taken care of more so than the people who are going to be wealthy no matter what let's just keep it real so that's what i got to say about that i'm kind of tired frustrated about certain things in regards to how i've seen this uh you know i'm on the outside i don't know what i'm talking about at the end of the day i'm just an opinion person you know take what i have to say and, and apply it to yourself just understand that this is how i see it as i'm as i'm sitting here um watching it from afar but you know this is coming from somebody who's watched a lot of players Careers go down the toilet, man. And then I have the nerve to sit up here in my older age, you know, as a grown man, and watch the league get mad at these players for wanting to get into situations that, so they don't have to go down those paths. Nah, man. Nah. Nah. They should make it easier for these guys to get the heck out of these cities. Honestly. They need to make it easier. They sh you shouldn't be tied down for five years in a bad situation. have to force your way out. Got to be quiet so you can get out of a bad situation. No. Closets should be much easier to get out of. If you want to focus on something, focus on that. That's all I got to say, man. My name is BDO44. It's just an opinion piece. I'm out.